So now we'll do a site plan and learn a few more little tricks about AutoCAD and file management and setting things up and working together. So I've opened the site plan blank file. And if I don't want to ruin this for future use, I have to save it as something else. So I'm going to save it as my standard site plan demo one. There we go. Got that, uh, got that working. And so let's take a look at it. First thing to do, let's check the units and see how it's being drawn. This is being drawn in decimal feet. That's really common for site plans. And it's in degrees, minutes, and seconds. But I think um, the data is given to me in surveyor's units. So I'm going to do that. North, some degrees, east or west, something like that. So I'm going to change that to surveyor's units. Um, and then, um, let's see if we have the, the C prop layer in here already. We do C prop layer. So now what we need to do is go get that, um, we'll get that property line file and see, see what it looks like. Okay. So I can see that I've got a start elevation. And this is the format of what I'm going to type in from where I'm at. And that means that I'll need to have my dynamic off. Turn off my dynamic. You can actually copy and, copy and paste these. But the way it's given in the surveyor's book, it says from where you're at, 428.1 feet. And then south, one degree, 46 minutes, 30 seconds to the east. And um, that means that I start drawing south, straight down. And then I rotate that line by those that angle to the east. It's kind of an interesting way to do it. If you've done SketchUp before, this is exactly how SketchUp operates. You actually draw a compass line and put it in. So I'm gonna I'm gonna demonstrate that a little bit for you. Now first of all I see 428 feet. So let me um, put myself onto the right layer C prop and draw 450 feet. And I do not need the foot symbol because I'm in decimal feet. And look, my cool line doesn't show up right. Because I'm so far away. I'm so far zoomed out. But it will show up right in your layout later on. Okay, so there we go. So since I'm going to start going south, I'm going to start over here somewhere. I'm just going to go click. And then I'm going to type from where I'm at the at symbol you can see me typing down here okay from where i'm at 428.1 and i do not need the foot symbol and i use the angle symbol south one degree 46 minutes 30 seconds east and you can see that was like drawing in the south direction for 428 feet and then bending it or rotating it one degree to the east. Okay, then the next one is due west. So if I have my ortho on, that's just straight across and that's 146.5 feet. And this is an actual property near us. And then it's from where I'll undo that again, where I'm at 419.5 feet at an angle. This time I'm going to go north at an 
angle. Oop. Got that wrong. Now what I typed in there. 419.5 at an angle of 1 degree, 46 minutes, 30 seconds to the west. Didn't like something there. Let's try that again. 419.5 at an angle north. 1D, 46 minutes, 30 seconds to the west. That looks right. But I forgot the at symbol. This is why sometimes it's easier to just do the copy and paste. There's so much stuff to type and get it. Let's go right here. So from where I'm at, 419.5 at an angle north, 1D, 46 minutes, 30 seconds. There we go. Now the next one goes from where I'm at. 65.8 at an angle, 84D, 48 minutes, 22 seconds to the east. So I forgot something again there from where I'm at. Again, 65.8 at an angle, north, 84D, 48 Minutes, 22 seconds east, worked. And then my next one is 80.8, all right, from where I'm at, 80.8, at an angle north, 84D, 48 minutes, 22 seconds east. Now you're gonna notice it doesn't quite close. That's really common. Okay, this one doesn't close by quite a bit, but let's find out what's that distance. And that's because there's all sorts of estimates. Five feet. Okay, so we're just going to do a fillet. Radius, zero. And we'll close that. And now, I have a, now I have a property line. That's the first thing that you're supposed to do. Now we'll go to our B size. There it goes. And I need to put in a viewport. And remember, viewports go on the depth point layer. Click layout, rectangular. And it shows up. And see, now my lines show up properly. And um, I don't know what that is, scale, but I think 1 equals 50 is good, appropriate. So, and remember that we want to lock that once we've got it in there so we don't accidentally change it. So that's probably a good place to do a save. I don't lose my work somewhere. Okay, now I'm going to create elevation markers using multiliter. So that's on the that's on the annotate tab. Multiliter, and I need to make a new multiliter style. About making styles. So, and I'll do it from the standard, but I'll do a new one, and I'm going to call it elevation. Marker. So this is probably all okay. Let's see, everything looks right. My content, well, my content should really be 0 0.12 high. Middle top line, middle top line, that all looks okay. But I'm not just going to type it in. I'm going to use an existing block that's in here. And I'm going to use one called circle that's usually used for a tag number. And I can so now I'm going to use a multi-leader. I need to do it on not the depth points layer, but on a text layer or a dimension layer. 
uh, I didn't say which one to use. I'll use it on a text here. Let me do my here. Again. And then I'm going to put in that elevation from that point, and I have to go back to my um, thing and and read it. it. Says I started at an elevation two foot. Let me put two foot. There we go. And you'll do that on all the other corners also. Okay, and I've given you the, the elevation at the start of each one. This is 8, 9, 3, and 2.0. Okay, so that, that does that part of it. And let's see if I've given you a sample for this. Um, no. So, so just put those, put those in there, and that should do. Okay, there's more there's lots more stuff that goes on one of these. Usually we we put um you know text along here and we put a view marker and all that kind of stuff. Um you can put your your title on. Oh, and then we have a new thing to do also. Create a 40 by 40 square region and use a wipeout. Okay? So Let's come into the model now. And again, I'll do that on I'll do that on a um on the site layer just to do it. So I want to make a rectangle that's 40 by 40. But whoopsie. 40 comma from where I'm at, sorry. Where I'm at, e comma. There we go. And I don't care where it is in here. Okay, and then I'm going to put a hatch on it. There's my hatch button. And I'll just do a little hatch. Put it in there. That's obviously too much. So this is probably going to be the scale of 50 now. Right. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Close the hatch there. That looks cool. See how it looks over here. That's looking good. Now I'm going to do something called a wipeout. And I'm going to put the frame on the text layer. And I'm just going to put a frame in here that I want to draw over. So I'm going to write building pad in there, but I want it to kind of wipe out these lines. So the term is wipe out, and I'm going to select a polyline. Draw right over the top of that, and that's given me a wipe out. So now, of course, I can do text. I'll do a middle center. I'll put it right here. And my text height is probably going to be like 0 0.09. Small. Building. There we go. So that's the last thing I want you to do is be able to put this in here. Okay, it's just a, a technique that can be used. Wipeouts can be used um, to write on top of things and give you a clear area. So there we go. That's what you're going to do. You should fill all of this out as we've been going along, right? This one would probably be renamed as Site Plan. Company Standard Site Plan. At this point, I think you've got the hang of it of what to do to fill all of this out. Now you'll have your last part of a little drawing set. You'll have a floor plan, a space plan, a roof plan, and a site plan. There we go.
That's how you work with civil units.